Hello, this is Paul Check. Today I thought I would share a little information on how to breathe properly during side bending exercises when you're using resistance. Breathing is absolutely essential to effective movement because breathing or the respiratory functions are at the very top of what I call the check totem pole or the hierarchy of systems superseded only by the psyche itself. What that means is that the way we breathe either excites the muscles in order to do the movement because we're breathing properly for the movement or it shuts the muscles down. In other words, if you're trying to push something while you're breathing in, you're going to have an inhibition of the flexion muscles because the muscles of expiration activate are, are the flexors. In other words, if you're breathing out, you can even just put your finger in your belly button and you can see as soon as you do that, your flexor muscles fire. But if you're breathing out when you need extension strength, the muscles that you're lifting with would be inhibited because you're breathing out. Because as far as the brain's concerned, keeping the respiratory system functioning well is more important than any other exercise that you're possibly going to do. You can live without the exercise, but you cannot live without breathing. Side bending patterns are a bit tricky. And just so you know, this kind of information is covered right in the very beginning of my advanced training programs with Czech Exercise Coach, which is bar none the most comprehensive, complete, holistic uh, certification or advanced training program for people entering into the world of professional exercise coaching or the use of exercise as therapy or developing high performance exercise programs. So today we'll talk a little bit about side bending movements. So we'll start with a simple dumbbell side bend. If I have a dumbbell in my left arm and I want to do a side bend, the antagonists are the, the agonists, the working movement muscle, the working muscles are the right oblique abdominal muscles and the right quadratus lumborum. So all the muscles that bend you to the right. Because those are the working muscles, in order to facilitate those muscles, I need to breathe out because when these muscles activate, they're closing the rib cage down, which is commiserate with exhalation. So if you've got a dumbbell in your left hand and you're doing the movements, you'd want to breathe in, breathe out, breathe in, breathe out. Now, if you've got a load in your hand, the higher the load, the more important it is to keep pressure in the system to stabilize the core. The abdominal muscles contract to create intra-abdominal pressure, but that pushes the organs up into the diaphragm. So if as you're exhaling, you just let it all out, there's no pressure in the lungs or the thoracic cavity to create stiffness against the abdominal muscles or intra-abdominal pressure in the organs rising. So the heavier the load, the more you want to pressurize. So if I'm going to side bend with a heavy load, I would inhale. Inhale, exhale. Now the heavier the load, the more pressure I need to keep the, stiff, the system or the core stiff enough so that the load does not end up hanging off my ligaments or overloading discs and things like that. So to recap, if you're side bending away from the dumbbell, the muscles that are the agonists or the working muscles are closing the rib cage down, which is coupled with exhalation. And then as you repeat the cycle, you're opening the rib cage that's coupled with inhalation. Now, if we watch carefully, all we got to do is take that dumbbell and put it over here or leave it here, for example. And now the trunk's still going to side bend, but because we're pushing, the action is to lift the weight. So in order to accomplish the objective of lifting the weight, notice we are not only side bending, but we're opening the rib cage on the side that's working. So in order to breathe effectively, we would need to begin with inhalation, excuse me, exhalation, and then inhale as we push the weight and exhale on the way down. Sorry, I gotta breathe in first, exhale. So it looks, 
If you just saw the trunk and didn't see the weight, it looks like the same movement. The other thing that's involved here is not only the fact that the rib cage is opening under load, but anytime you raise your arm above about 140 degrees, you have to have a reversal of the thoracic curve or you'll impinge the humerus against the acromion. So in order to get the shoulder to work correctly and safely, we need that inhalation position because as the ribs come up, it allows the shoulder blade to come back and turn upward. If the rib cage is going down, as the arm's going up, it'll lock the shoulder up. That's one of the most common breathing mistakes with overhead lifting that leads to what is sometimes called weightlifter shoulder in the orthopedic literature, but is really the result of faulty breathing and not understanding basic, <coughs> excuse me, body mechanics or biomechanics. So I've just showed you that if the working muscles are closing down, you breathe out, you breathe in on the return. If the working muscles are opening the rib cage, you breathe in with opening and you use pressure to maintain stiffness in the core so that your structure is protected. Now, just to give you a quick example of what it looks like on a cable, if I take the cable and I'm gonna do a side bending exercise, we'll go just a touch lighter on that. Then what I would do is I would be exhale, I mean, excuse me, I'm, I'm, I inhale to, to work. I'm gonna work, so I'm gonna side bend and exhale. Inhale, rib cage is opening. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. Okay. Now, if we are going to do an exercise with the cable and we're starting from the bottom, then the cable basically functions like a dumbbell in the hand. So if you're going this way, the working muscles, the agonists are on the right side of the body, the loads on the left, that would be exhale, inhale. Fill your belly full and then activate your core to the degree you need to create stiffness. The heavier the weight, the more stiffness you need and the pressure that you blow out with determines how much recruitment you get and how stiff you make the spine. And there's a lot of practice involved in this because if you're doing dynamic movements or plyometric type movements, you have to master the basics so that as you go into more advanced exercise, you learn to feel how the body is moving, where is the right time in the movement to breathe. And then there's the issue of, um, when do I stop breathing? So the general rule of thumb is if you're lifting a weight of any type in any exercise and your natural intuition is to hold your breath, that means the brain thinks that it's more important to stabilize the structure than it is to breathe in order to protect the structure. So if I was gonna do a heavy press, say this was two or three times the weight, I would have to breathe in Fill my belly, charge my core, push the weight up while I'm inhala inhaling. I've got the inhalation held, so my shoulder's already in a good position. And then release the weight until just after the sticking point. And then right then, when I've passed the sticking point or the hardest point in the movement, I would, I would re-breathe and push and lower, re-breathe push, lower, okay? So where you let the air out in any movement is going to depend on your inner feeling, but the key thing is don't let the air out too quickly or you'll have an unstable spine and rib cage and that leads to injury and you'll lose all your intra-abdominal pressure so you can get hurt. So there's some key tips for you today on breathing and side bending movements. And remember, you can typically breathe with the movement when you're at about 60% of your maximum or anytime you, you can lift the weight approximately 22 times or more, it would be safe to just um, breathe as you move. So exhale, inhale, exhale, inhale. 
But if it gets to the point where I feel like, wow, this weight's too heavy, I'm going to have to then switch in order to make that happen. So I may actually have to, for protection of my spine, to charge it if I get heavy enough. And here's another tip. The breathing order may have to change in order to protect the spine. If I was had a 100-pound dumbbell in my hand, I may have to inhale, charge the core, and then after I get through the sticking movement, exhale, and then inhale. Or if it's really heavy, I might have to inhale, charge, do the movement, and then exhale, rebreathe, do the movement, that would be when you're getting up into higher and higher intensities. So there's a fair bit of technicality because the way you breathe has to change as the intensity of the load gets higher and higher, which is why when you come to check advanced training programs, the instructors point out these key details to you that in general are not taught in any exercise program or certification I've ever seen in my life but I can tell you that these things do have a huge influence on not only your physical performance, but if you're breathing backward while you're exercising, you drive the pattern deeper and deeper, and that is often coupled with an inverted breathing pattern or a number of different types of breathing pattern disorders that disrupt our biochemistry, disrupt our energy levels, and often lead to needing quick energy such as sugar, caffeine, and other stimulants that progressively spin us down so you can sooner or later become what I call a fit sick person which I see many of in my professional practice. Thanks for joining me today. Simple techniques. Best thing to do is not try to think it out in your head. Take your phone or your computer somewhere where you can get a dumbbell or bring a dumbbell over and actually do the movements and feel what's happening in your body and I think you'll find if you do some workouts at around the 20 to 25 repetition zone and breathe while you're moving and just keep the breathing and the moving timed, you can get quite a beautiful sense of connection, opening, emotional movement, healing, and a beautiful, natural, I'm centered, I'm connected kind of high. Thanks for joining me today. I'll look forward to sharing with you soon. I'm Paul Check. Hope to see you in Check Exercise Coach and or HLC1, Holistic Lifestyle Coach Level 1, which is now available online. See you next time.